Welcome to Reality Asserts Itself on the Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay. Ten years ago, Wendell Potter had quit his job as a senior executive at Cigna Health Insurance. He'd been in the business for about 20 years and had risen to a very senior executive position, a head of communications at Cigna. And he decided he'd had enough. He took a year off to decide what he would do with the rest of his life. Well, here's what he decided to do. Recently, it became abundantly clear to me that the industry's charm offensive, which is the most visible part of a duplicitous and well-financed PR and lobbying campaign, uh, may well shape or form in a way that benefits Wall Street far more than average Americans. The industry and its backers are using fear tactics, as they did in 1994, to tar a transparent and accountable, publicly accountable health care option as, quote, government-run health care. But what we have today, Mr. Chairman, is Wall Street-run health care that has proven itself an untrustworthy partner to its customers, to the doctors and hospitals who deliver care, and to the state and federal governments that attempt to regulate it. That was June 24th, 2009, and that kicked off the rest of Wendell Potter's life, where he became a fighter for health care reform, consumer rights advocacy, fighting to keep money out of politics, and now working in investigative journalism. He's the author of several books, Deadly Spin, an insurance company insider speaks out on how corporate PR is killing health care and deceiving Americans. Also, with Nick Penniman, he wrote Nation on the Take, How Big Money Corrupts Our Democracy and What We Can Do About It. And his new project is Tarbell.org, a website which does investigative journalism into how money in politics impacts millions of Americans. Thanks for joining us, Wendell. My pleasure, Paul. Thank you. So normally on Reality Asserts Itself, we do this sort of biographical and then we get into the issues. But because of all the recent brouhaha about how the Republican Party is going to become the party of great health care uh, and the Democrats all now fighting Trump on health care after the Mueller report uh, didn't give them what they wanted, um, at least not so far. Uh, we're going to start with this current uh, iteration of the health care debate. Then in the following segments, we'll do the more biographical issue and then we'll pick up again on, on drilling into the whole health care and some of the other sure. issues you're interested in. So, as we say, Trump, uh, there's a court case going on. There's a, they're trying to uh, rule the Obamacare as uh, unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. uh, Trump's jumping on that, saying now we're going to have an opportunity to do a Republican health care plan. Uh, Nancy Pelosi is taking him up on it, saying no, the, they, they need to fix the ACA, Affordable Health Care Act. In the wings, the people are running for president, uh, who are many of whom are various versions of uh, Medicare for all, uh, single payer health care. What do you make of the politics of all this? Well, the politics of all of it is that uh, uh, nothing is actually going to happen uh, in Congress. Uh, one way or another that will affect our health care system. Even though Pelosi and Schumer are saying that they, uh, well, at least Pelosi, then she's, they're going to be able to introduce some legislation to, as they put it, shore up the Affordable Care Act. That's not going to go anywhere. They may, even if they pass it in the, in the House, it'll certainly not pass in the Senate and never reach the president's desk. Uh, the president has really uh, uh, got Republicans in Congress uh, uh, quite concerned because he has said uh, publicly, and he's had to backtrack, he had said that the Republicans would, would come up with some kind of, of bill to replace the Affordable Care Act, uh, which they spent years saying they would try to do and never did. Uh, and, of course, he said that uh, his administration would support this 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 lawsuit that is challenging the constitutionality of uh, the Affordable Care Act, that actually could uh, work its way through the court system and even reach the Supreme Court uh, this year or next. It's, uh, no one knows exactly how long it would take, but that could, if it, if it is passed, uh, uh, if, if the uh, Supreme Court upholds a decision in a Texas court, that could really undo the Affordable Care Act. Uh, that's where things stand right now. But in terms of legislation, don't expect to see anything out of either chamber. Uh, well, that'll, that'll reach the, the president's desk. Now, a lot of this is positioning for the 2020 elections. Absolutely. Um, on both sides. Um, in terms of the judicial process, 
I mean, how quickly can this proceed? If, for example, the Supreme Court found against the ACA, although previously not that dissimilar numbers of the court, Roberts uh, went yeah. with saying the ACA was uh, constitutional, but there's some new twist with the case this time that yeah. maybe would change his vote. I mean, what time frame uh, might this happen in and how realistic is it that Roberts may go the other way this time? Well, the, uh, the case is being appealed uh, with a decision in, out of the Texas federal court, uh, which sided with the attorneys general of the Republican states that filed a lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of the law. Uh, that is being appealed uh, at a federal uh, appeals court in New Orleans. Don't know exactly when we'll hear uh, uh, about that case, but uh, I would expect probably that that case will overturn the, the Texas judge's decision. It's all po political, and the, the, uh, uh, the, the judge in New Orleans is, was appointed by a Democrat, uh, so there's some expectation that he will uh, uh, overturn that earlier court decision. Uh, whatever happens, it likely will proceed on to the Supreme Court uh, because whoever loses probably will try to get it to the Supreme Court. How long that will take is really unknown, but it conceivably, if the court decides to take it up, uh, could take it up next year. Uh, I mean, one would, think, this year, one would think, given Trump has so many allies on the Supreme Court, that they will make damn sure that they do not make a decision pre-election, yeah. or they will be handing Trump and the Republicans a dog's breakfast mess you're of, absolutely of right. no health care system at all going into the 2020 elections. I, I think you're exactly so right. So this is a good propaganda move, but yeah. this is not, be careful what you wish for, uh, President Trump, because if yeah. you get this handed back to you, you're going to, this is going to kill you in the 2020 elections. It absolutely will. And I think the, the, the attorneys general that brought this suit uh, did this without really understanding what would happen if this law is declared unconstitutional. And you're exactly right. If the Supreme Court were to side with those attorneys general, uh, it would be an absolute chaos, chaotic mess for the president, for everybody for that matter. But it would be a well, first and foremost, yeah. for the American people who yeah. will have no idea where their, what, what their health insurance is anymore. Exactly. Uh, and it would take us back to, it would, it would be worse than, than this, the reality of our health care system before the Affordable Care Act was passed because health care costs have gotten, they've, they've continued to go up. And uh, so it would be, as you put it at a dog's breakfast, it'd be, it'd be a real mess. Uh, I, 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 I don't think, I think you're, for that reason, I don't think that we'll see the Supreme Court uh, being eager to take this up, quite frankly, uh, and they may never do it. But if they do, you know, the court is, uh, there are two Trump appointees on, on, the, on the bench now. Uh, and, and for Trump's base, it makes him look good, because one of the accusations of the base is how they didn't repeal and replace uh, Obamacare. That's Some right. of the right-wing radio pundits give him hell for it and give the Republicans hell for it. Right. So right. he can now show, oh, you know, I haven't given up on this, even right. though it's mostly BS, probably. Yeah. But uh, another kind of BS is happening on the side of the Democratic Party. Ryan Grimm from The Intercept had an interesting story, uh, how behind the scenes, Nancy Pelosi is actually uh, meeting with, or his, her representatives are meeting with the private insurance companies. Right. And saying, "Don't worry, we're, we who, we who actually really run the Democratic Party right. are not interested in single payer Medicare for all style health care." Uh, what do you know about this? You know, it's a terrific reporting by, by Ryan Grimm at the Intercept, and uh, and it's been verified that a guy named Wendell Primus, who is uh, Pelosi's chief uh, health care policy guy, was meeting behind closed doors with uh, health insurance company executives, uh, more or less reassuring them that. Uh, not to worry, you know, we're, we're not going to do anything that will uh, bother your, your profits. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, and even more recently, uh, reports surfaced about his having yet another closed-door meeting, this time with staff of uh, Democrats in the House, uh, essentially saying, you know, we, I know, we know you guys, some, some of you guys have introduced and are co-sponsoring a Medicare for All bill. Um, uh, go slow on that. We're not going to really p uh, pay any attention to that legislation. 
Uh, so uh, what's behind this, quite frankly, is money in politics, Paul, because a lot of the Democratic leaders have taken a boatload of money from the health insurance industry, from the pharmaceutical companies, and they don't want that to end anytime soon. Yeah, let me say to our audience, go to tarbell.org because there's an article there which actually lays out which of the Democrats have gotten money from the healthcare industry. They've done a lot of that kind of reporting. We have, and we're going to continue to take a close look at that. As, as we go through this election cycle, we're going to uh, continue to report on which Democrats are on the take. And there are a lot of them on the, uh, in the House in particular, both, both the House and the Senate. Uh, but um, um, it's clear that those that have taken a lot of money, and one of those who has is a uh, congresswoman from Illinois, uh, Sherry Bus Bustos, who is now the chair of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. And if I remember from your article, she's a former insurance executive as well. She worked for a big you guys went, You guys went in kind of different directions. Exactly. Here. Like she, she and I had exactly the same title, uh, Vice President of Corporate Communications. And, and, uh, uh, and yeah, we went different directions. But she is one of the members of the House, the Democratic Caucus, who's taken uh, big checks from all five of the political action committees of the big for-profit insurance companies. And, uh, uh, and, and she's been, her own self, been throwing cold water on the idea of moving toward a Medicare for all type system. So she's really carrying water for the health insurance industry. Well, we'll get into some of the detail of the objections to single payer coming from the Democratic Party and the Republican Party leadership mm -hmm. in, a, in one of the future segments. But I, in the current thing, situation, I think it's kind of ironic in some ways. When, when President Obama got Obamacare passed, he made a deal with pharma mm -hmm. that if you don't fight me on this health care reform, right. <clears throat> because quote unquote, we're taking on the private insurance companies. I think in the early stages, maybe the private insurance companies didn't like what was coming, but in the end, watch what happened to their stock once oh, it got yeah. passed. They didn't yeah. mind it whatsoever. But in the beginning, they didn't like the fact that it was even being talked about exactly. how to change the system. Right. But President Obama says to pharma, stay out of this and uh, we'll leave you guys alone mm -hmm. and we'll protect you from this Canadian uh, importation of Canadian uh, generic drugs and such. Now it's a bit of the reverse. Uh, Pelosi is saying to the insurance companies, don't worry, we'll protect you from uh, uh, single payer Medicare for all, right. but don't you fight us because we want to bring down drug prices. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, when the whole thing's an in integrated problem. Oh, it is. It, it is an integrated problem. In fact, uh, all the special interests have uh, in healthcare, you're talking about insurance companies, drug companies, big hospital companies, medical device manufacturers, the AMA, they have uh, symbiotic relationships. Uh, and it's just foolishness to think that there is any, any interest among any of those parties, including the insurers, to really do something about bringing down healthcare costs. Uh, there's a lot of finger pointing going on, and that serves a useful purpose for them. Uh, the drug companies point the finger of blame at the insurance companies, and the insurance companies say it's, it's pharma or the pharmacy benefit managers, uh, which is another layer of middlemen that we might talk about. Uh, but it's, it's an ex extraordinarily complex system. Well, we're going to get into this in more detail, yeah. but let me just ask you one question. I don't understand why the insurance companies don't have a self-interest in being more active in reducing certain costs. And I'll give you an example from my personal experience. My kid needed a CPAP machine right. uh, for apnea. He's, and um, for a, a, a technician to come to the house, bring the machine, shove it on his head, and in about four minutes, do it up, mm -hmm. the insurance company, which wound up getting the whole bill, because I'd already met our crazy $3,000 uh, deductible for the year, but $2,300 for a machine that sells on Amazon for $125. Mm -hmm. And yeah. 10 minutes of, this, of the woman's time, I don't understand, why do insurance companies put up with that? Well, they, have, uh, they don't have any, any, any real incentive to bring costs down. They talk a good game, and they've sold uh, us, the, the American public, a bill of goods, goods over many years trying to make us believe that they can bring costs down or have an interest in doing that. See, they're, they have kind of a monopoly situation. There is, you are not eligible for Medicare. 
so you have to get your coverage uh, through the private insurance market. Not one of them, even the, those big ones, and including the big ones that I used to work for, has enough market share uh, to really negotiate uh, favorable deals with the drug companies uh, or big hospital companies. So that's number one. They're not big enough. They don't have enough clout to do it. The other is they don't have, uh, they don't have a, that much of a desire to do that, uh, despite what they say. Because as health care costs go up, uh, and because they're kind of the only game in town for most of us, uh, they're able to raise premiums. I was about to say, it helps justify crazy yeah. deductibles exactly. and all the rest of the premiums. Yeah, it's just a matter of their, over time, being able to shift more and more of the cost of premiums and, and, uh, and, deduct and the cost of health care to us. As health care costs go up and they are able to take in more premiums, um, that means they get more revenue. So they grow. Uh, and they have more revenue to convert to profits. So that's why it's all a game. Uh, and that's why all this finger pointing is just nonsense. It's, uh, they're all in on the game and they're making out like gangbusters and the rest of us are getting screwed. Okay, on the next segment of Reality Asserts Itself with Wendell Potter, we are gonna go back to those days leading up to his testimony at the Senate hearing. And we will go through the process of transitioning from a communication person, executive, defending the private insurance industry to a communication activist attacking the private insurance or exposing the private insurance industry. That's on Reality Asserts Itself on The Real News Network. Thanks for joining us.